This is going to be another question and answer video, and I got an email referring to Matthew eleven nineteen, and someone asked, "What are you supposed to say when someone uses Matthew eleven nineteen to prove a Christian can drink alcohol?" And you know, you've probably heard this quite a bit. In Matthew eleven eighteen and nineteen, it says, "For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he hath the devil. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold, a man gluttonous." and a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of her children. Now, if someone wants to use this to prove that Jesus Christ drank alcohol, therefore proving that a Christian can drink alcohol, they have to override all the clear verses in Scripture with this verse. And that's not something you want to do. Also, they take the story or what the people were saying about Jesus over the clear commands in the Bible. For example, not every time someone opens their mouth in Scripture are they actually saying the right thing. For example, in Genesis 3-4, it says, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. The devil obviously was telling Eve the wrong thing to get her to eat off of the tree. Now, Genesis 3-4 is Scripture. It's without error. But it records what the devil said. Matthew eleven nineteen is recording what the accusers of Jesus Christ said. And in Matthew eleven eighteen and 19, what you have is about what the accusers of our Lord were saying about him and John the Baptist. They were claiming he was a drunkard, that he was a wine-bibber, and he was gluttonous. So I don't believe that Matthew 1, 18, 19 is saying that Jesus drank alcohol, so therefore it's okay for us to drink it. I believe it's just recording what his accusers said about him. And that's the, just the whole answer to this question. It's simply recording what his accusers said about him. And so that this isn't just, a, just too quick of an answer, I'm going to go ahead and give you some reasons why a Christian should not drink alcohol. And if you're going to use Matthew eleven nineteen to show that a Christian can drink alcohol or that it's okay, you're going to have to override all of these other clear verses in Scripture. So here are some reasons why that a Christian shouldn't drink alcohol. The first reason is it's connected with homosexuality. In Genesis 9, 20 through 25, it says, And Noah began to be an husbandman and planted a vineyard, and he drank of the wine and was drunken. And he was uncovered within his tent. So Noah, as soon as he got off the ark, he had a great victory. But then he plants a vineyard and he drinks of the wine. Uh, maybe he didn't know that, you know, at this time, you know, things were different. Things were changing. Maybe he didn't realize that letting it sit out too long and everything else would make it where he would get drunk off of it. But he was uncovered within his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father. So Ham, Noah's son, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without. And Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward and they saw not their father's nakedness. And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. So what you have here is the first case of homosexuality in the Bible, where Noah was drunk, Ham comes in, sees him, and he, this is the first case of homosexuality in the Bible. Now a lot of people don't agree that that's the first case of homosexuality, but you have to admit there was some type of bad sexual sin that came about because Noah drank wine and got drunk now moving on it's also connected with incest and there's no debate about this one in genesis 19 32 through 36 what you have is lot and his two daughters it says come let us make our father drink wine so lot's uh, daughters are going to cause him to drink wine and it says and we will lie with him that we may preserve seed of our father and they made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and lay with her father, and he perceived not when she lay down or when she arose. And it came to pass on the morrow that the firstborn said unto the younger, Behold, I lay yesternight with my father, 
Father, let us make him drink wine this night. Arise and go thou in and lie with him that we may preserve seed of our father. And they made their father drink wine that night also. And the younger arose and lay with them and perceived not when she lay down nor when she arose. Thus were the daughters of Lot with child by their father. So they used alcohol to get their father to lay with them and preserve seed. So their alcohol associated with incest. It was associated with homosexuality. It's associated with incest. And next, it's connected with not just these two uh, types of fornication, but pretty much any type of fornication in the Bible is connected with. And that's sex with anyone that you're not married to, whether you're married or not. That's what fornication is. And Habakkuk 2.15, Woe well unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, that puttest thy bottle to him, and makest him drunken also, that thou mayest look on their nakedness. So the Bible plainly tells you in Habakkuk 2.15 that men will try to convince you to drink alcohol so that they can look on your nakedness. Now next, it's connected with covering up sexual sin. In 2 Samuel 11, 12 through 13, you know the story of David and Bathsheba. David sees Bathsheba bathing and he takes her, he lays with her and she's married and look what he does to her husband. And David said to Uriah, which is Bathsheba's husband, tarry here today also and tomorrow I will let thee depart. So Uriah abode in Jerusalem that day and the morrow and when David had called him, He did eat and drink before him, and he made him drunk. And at even he went out to lie on his bed with the servants of his Lord, but went not down to his house. So David was trying to get Uriah drunk so that he would go home and lay with his wife, and that way he would think that the child that, see, Bathsheba was with with the child of David, and he thought that if Uriah went home, laid with his wife, then he would think that was his child instead of David's. He was trying to cover up his sin of adultery by having Uriah get drunk and go home to his wife, but he ended up not going home to his wife, and so David has him killed on the front lines in the battle. But there you have it, covering up, trying to cover up sexual sin with alcohol. Next, it's connected with letting your guard down. See, when you drink alcohol... You let your guard down. It messes with your judgment. In 1 Kings 16, 8 through 9, it says, In the twenty and sixth year of Asa, king of Judah, began Elah the son of Basha to reign over Israel in Tirzah two years, and his servant Zimri, captain of half his chariots, conspired against him as he was in Tirzah, drinking himself drunk in the house of Arza, steward of the house in Tirzah. And he comes in there and kills him. He he was in there drinking. Uh, Elah was in there drinking. He lets his guard down. It leads to his demise. Drinking connected with letting your guard down. That's why the Bible says, "Be not drunk with wine." And it talks about being sober and be filled with the Spirit. And the last thing is that it's connected with a horrible way to live. I mean, all throughout the Bible, you just see how it causes sorrow, sin, leads to more sin. And then look at Proverbs 29, or Proverbs 23, 29 through 35. And after reading this, how can you say it's a good idea, if you believe the Bible, to drink wine, to drink alcohol? It says in Proverbs 23, 29, Who hath woe, who hath sorrow, who hath contentions? Who hath babbling? Who hath wounds without cause? Who hath redness of eyes? They that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine. Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth his color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. At the last it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. Thine eyes shall behold strange women, and thine heart shall utter perverse things. Yea, thou shalt be as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea, or as he that lieth upon the top of a mast. They have stricken me, shalt thou say, and I was not sick. They have beaten me, and I felt it not. When shall I awake? 
I will seek it yet again. See, he's he, he goes through all this, and yet he's such an addict, and he's given himself over to wine and strong drink the very next day, even though he had such a horrible time, he's going to seek it again. And it bites him like a serpent. That's why they call it liquid devil. They call it that for a reason. His eyes behold strange women. I've had a guy just tell me recently that he cheated on his girlfriend because he got drunk one night and ruined his re relationship with his would-have-been future wife because he got drunk one night. And it, made his, it, it, it makes your heart utter perverse things. It makes you do things that you n normally wouldn't do. As I've already showed you examples, it's made people in the Bible do things that they normally wouldn't do. Or made something happen that normally wouldn't have happened had they not have been drinking. Someone might say, well, uh, you, it's okay as long as you don't get drunk. Well, how do you, unless you get drunk, how do you know how much you can drink? You know, there's, there's all types of things you can get into with that. And, uh, I mean, if, what if you're just drinking a little bit? You know, the Bible says, abstain from all appearance of evil. You know, everybody else doesn't know you're just drinking a little bit. You know, it's a horrible testimony for a lost person to see a Christian sitting at the bar drinking alcohol. But these are some reasons why I believe every Christian should stay away from alcohol.